Have you ever worked with a door or another gizmo and were unable to get transform controls? Well, if you click on it one time, the transform controls will pop up, and now we can use our snapping tool to align it easily. And then if we turn snapping off, while it's still selected, we can now adjust it by sliding it in and get it exactly where we want it. But you might also be thinking, well, how can you get something to animate? Like if we come in here, you'll see that this is actually a red trail. And how do we get a red trail to animate? So if we come into our gizmos tab and we pull out the particle effects, and then on our particle effect, we look in here, you'll notice there's no animation. So what you need to do is you need to group it into another object. So if you go to your shapes tab, grab a shape like this, and I highly recommend making it both invisible and non-collidable. This way it adds less to your capacity. Now if we group these two together, and now that they're grouped, I can go into the properties of the grouping. I can close this down, although we might want to adjust these settings. So perhaps let's go with a Sparkles AOE. We'll turn looping on. And now let's come in here and we can click animated. And now from here we can simply record an animation. And then we'll take this over to here, hit stop. And then we're going to loop it back and forth, play on start, and give it a speed of 0.5, so it's a little more magical. And now we can see the sparkles are flying around, but you know, those sparkles are really generic. I mean, really generic. What if we want them to look really cool? So let's go ahead and stop the world. We're gonna go hit stop world. And now if we come into our sparkles objects, we'll go into the properties, we'll go into the object, We'll click on this one, and now we have transform controls on this. But not only can you slide and move it around, you can actually scale it too. And if you scale this, oh, you know what? They do not look scaled. Perhaps there's another method to get them to scale. Let's see if we stop world again. And now we come into here, and we scale this object down. So if we come and stretch this out further, what's going to happen? Oh, there it is. Okay, so it is working. It's just kind of hard to tell. Yeah, so there you go. Now all of these visual effects can have really unique takes on what was originally defined as the only option. But that doesn't just apply to visual effects elements. Maybe it's the most useful, but you could do that with a door too. I've grabbed a copy of this door, and now let's go ahead and select it. And note that you can make this door really skinny. You can make this door really small. You could make this door really flat. We could even potentially make this look like it's a tablet and then have it as something you could move around because it's got this really nice glow. So now we can't animate this object. You'll see there's no properties in here, but if we go and grab, let's say another invisible object, and now let's go select both and then group them together. And to group, you put your hand inside the selection of two objects and press to the left to group. And now we're going to open up the properties on this group and then we can select and make it interactive, grabbable. We'll give it physics. We're now going to see it falls through the world. So as we've now discovered, this object that was invisible does need to become collidable. So if we open up the properties on here and then we go into the group, we'll go open this up. And so this is going to define where the object can be interacted with. So let's make it collidable, and then let's also select it, scale it down here, scale it up here so it fills this entire space. And now we've got, perfect. And now we'll go ahead and unselect it, and then we'll exit the grouping. And now if we come in, it falls onto the ground, perfect. And you can now grab this door and bring it around. You could bring it around and be like, hey, you guys, check out this door. This is so cool. Now, it is worth noting, I'm not seeing the properties pop up when you're grabbing it, which is great because I was really concerned about this potentially having a button here that you might accidentally click. But if you let go, it appears. So this might not be the right size for a door. You might consider putting a stand on it so you can like walk it around and then let it go and it goes on a stand. But it does work. It's really neat. And this is just the beginning of the possibilities. I mean, this kind of does feel like a tablet, right? Like imagine you took a screenshot in one of the worlds and then you made an object that was grabbable and then the door popped in. There's definitely a lot of possibilities here and I look forward to seeing what you guys create. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.